Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New Teeth Now webinar. My name is Bianca, and I'm here tonight with Dr. Richards. Hello, hello. And tonight we are going to be talking all things dental implants, <clears throat> so we are so happy you are here joining us. Um, we encourage you throughout the webinar to submit questions, and we'll, Dr. Richards will answer them live. Um, so if you're joining us through GoToWebinar, uh, there should be a chat box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Um, you can go ahead and submit questions right through there. If you don't see that box, there should be an arrow that you can click on to pull that up. And if you are joining us through YouTube, you can submit questions right in like the comment section. We'll be able to see those and answer them. So go ahead and start submitting. We can't wait to answer those. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and get started. So we have uh, a lot of exciting things going on here at New Teeth Now. Uh, first, uh, beautiful Bianca here. Uh, you may not be able yeah, to see. Yeah, I don't think you can tell. But, <laughs> but she I is going to deliver like a baby. I'm like eight months pregnant, so I won't be here next month. February 25th. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, you will miss next month, and we'll miss you. Yeah, so I'll be out for so, just a couple months. Anyway, yeah. so that's very exciting. Yes, it is. Um, the other two other things that are exciting, we have two other things that are exciting. Uh, we have two new surgeons here at New Teeth Now. Uh, we'll talk about them a little bit. One is uh, Catherine Kate Vorwald, and she, we have a slide that has a lot of her accolades, which are too many to mention. I'm not gonna sit here and read everything about Kate because it, we run through our time. She's a, both a dentist and a physician, and uh, she came to us after five years at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida, where she's been treating head and neck cancer. Uh, Kate is a uh, very accomplished, very nice person. I just can't even you know, believe we're lucky enough to uh, have Kate here. But uh, one, one thing, with this that I, I want to just kind of remind people is the um, quality of the treatment that you get by board certified trained oral and maxillofacial surgeons. Here we have Catherine Vorwald, Kate, who's done everything that she's done and so <clears throat> I just wonder how it is that a dentist can go to a weekend course, a general dentist who has no surgical training, no anesthesia training, they may go to weekend courses and get their you know, IV sedation permit or what have you, a weekend course and hold out that they can do what we and what our new associates can do. So you, you guys watching this who <clears throat> might consider going to a general dentist to have your full mouth implant rehab, you need to seriously look into the training of the people that you're dealing with. So you guys are smart, you're doing your research because you're on here listening to us. Uh, I know that you get what I'm saying. So that yeah. being said, you know, thank you for joining us tonight. We're so happy to have you here. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Aunt B and we'll move on through the webinar. So we'll kind of jump into things with looking, you know, about looking at the implants themselves. Um, so what are, what are our viewers seeing when they look at this fixed upper hybrid image? Well, what, you, what you've got here is a prosthesis that replaces your teeth. It's fixed, meaning it does not come in and out. The upper obviously refers to the upper jaw. And you can't see the palate portion, but there is no palate portion. Palate portion is gone. This is shaped like a horseshoe, and it attaches to typically six implants in the upper jaw, and it's hybrid, which to us means that the implant positions are disconnected from the tooth positions. With regular implant work, you have to put the implant sort of right on the money, dead on the money, where the tooth is going to be. But with a hybrid type restoration, a lot of these people have bone loss, we are unable to put the implant exactly where the tooth or the teeth need to be, and so that's the hybrid part. So it's fixed, hybrid, it's a full tooth replacement for the upper or lower jaw, and it's screw retained, removable, yet fixed. Typically they start out as plastic on the day of the surgery, 
and end up as zirconia porcelain after about five or six months of healing. Yes, and we actually have a question that came in that goes right along with what we're seeing. Um, okay. So Kelly asked, are you familiar with six on three? Six on three. Yeah. Maybe where the prosthesis has been cut in half. I, I don't know. That's not a term. I'm, I've heard of people, you know, doing half of it. So totally there's six, yeah. but there's three on each side and the prosthesis in t is in two parts. Uh, we don't do that, whatever it is. Um, but that's not a term you hear thrown around very much, six on three. Yeah, we usually place um, like four to six implants on the upper and lower depending. Yeah, typically, um, typically six in the upper to support a full set of teeth, which is 12 teeth. So mm -hmm. six implants for 12 teeth in the upper typically, unless it's a four zygoma situation. If right. it's a four zygoma situation, as you know, there's four zygomatic implants, still 12 teeth. And typically in the lower jaw, it's four, five, or six, depending on the size of the jaw, mm -hmm. because it's not good to get the implants too close together. And sometimes four is all that will fit sometimes five fit and occasionally we're able to put in six. But six on three is not something I've heard yeah. thrown around very much. So yeah, um, if you come in for a consult, I'll be able to tell you exactly how many implants you would have pla right. need placed. Right. Um, so we'll <clears throat> kind of go into what the day of surgery looks like. So first, um, you know, you'll arrive here about 7.30 in the morning. You'll be put under a deep sleep with general anesthesia for a pain-free procedure. Um, and then your, if needed, your teeth will be fully extracted. Um, then Dr. Richards will replace all the implants that you need. And after the implants are all placed, while the pa patient is still asleep, we'll take impressions for our lab to then customize the teeth. Um, you would wake up in a private recovery room while our in-house lab is creating those teeth. And then about you know four or so, those teeth um, are placed in the patient's mouth and adjusted and they are free to go home and start their healing process. Right, right. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, what would happen on the day of surgery. Right. And the general, we do these procedures under general anesthesia. I mean, we're we get a medical clearance on most every person because most every person who is having this done is in an upper age bracket, 60s, 70s, or 80s, occasionally 90s. And so we get medical clearances from a person's primary care physician or cardiologist or pulmonary doctor or endocrinologist. Um, occasionally we see people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s that are so healthy that we don't really get a formal medical clearance, but we still get lab work and a cardiogram. Um, it'll only be oral surgeons who have general anesthesia permits that would be able to offer general anesthesia. Uh, in our office, we employ nurse anesthetist, so-called CRNA, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist and they are RNs who go to three extra years of training in a hospital-based situation and put people to sleep for all types of surgery. And so um, that's who delivers the anesthesia while Dr. Kirkpatrick and I do the procedure that we do. So that type of situation is only gonna be found with people with doctors, like oral surgeons who have general anesthesia permits. And something about uh, the placement of the implants, we do not do guided surgery. We do what's so-called analog surgery. We uh, use a guide, but it's not a computer generated guide. And we basically freehand the implants. So we're able to change on the fly sometimes we might not think we're going to do a zygomatic implant and we end up doing a zygomatic implant. Sometimes we may go into a procedure thinking we're going to do something and we end up doing something a little different once, once we're in there. 
So we don't do guided surgery. Guided surgery really doesn't have a good place in full mouth rehab used for hybrid uh, restorations for experienced surgeons. Um, once again, uh, we have um, RNs in the recovery room to take care of you afterwards in our private recovery room. So, you know, this is a process that we have developed over a period of uh, 15, 20 years and longer. And it is a very proprietary process, the way that we do it. And that's why we're training our newly, uh, our new associates to do the process the way that we do it, the way that we know it works, the way that our lab does it. Uh, and that is the new teeth now way of doing things. Perfect. Um, and we also are, the, you know, the surgery's on one day and we all, in, we are all in one office as well, which right. really helps with communication and just <coughs> overall like cohesive, cohesiveness and smoothness of the procedure because our surgeons are all right here, our dental lab is here, and our restorative doctors are you here. You might mention something about our new lab facility. Yes, I do have a slide a little bit later we can, Good. We can show right. Good. for our expansion, um, but at least on the day of surgery, our lab is like literally right upstairs, so we can communicate and there's, it's so much better than like mailing something off to California and right. waiting and having issues, so we love having it all under one roof. And this is our physical location. Um, so we have three ORs. Um, the dental lab is in the back on the second floor and the, our restorative doctors are also on that second floor and then a um, bunch of patient rooms as well. Um, so this is where you'd visit when you come in for a consultation. And another big part um, of what we love to share is just our patient stories because um, they tell it better than we can. Um, so Nathan, he's a reptile trainer and wildlife conservationist who sustained a facial injury from an alligator accident. Um, and so he had constant oral pain and degrading overall health. So beyond his teeth, he was just really not feeling great at all. So we're gonna hear from Nathan. When people are afraid, they freeze. So when you freeze up, that will get you killed in my industry. I mean, there's definitely a very, very healthy respect. I've been studying, you know, behavior and all that stuff specifically with alligators and crocodiles and what I work with and train for almost 30 years. I'm not fearless, but I don't ever let fear in, in the room. One of only two times that I was bitten by an animal uh, in my entire life, uh, one of them happened to be square in the face. So I was doing gator wrestling shows, feeding demonstrations, all these different things, and um, I was kind of laying down on, on a dock similar to this, and I look over my shoulder and there's another alligator that was spooked by the activity and was already in the air. So as I turned to look over my shoulder to hear what the sound was, here I am turning my face right into a jumping alligator's mouth. And it was about eight feet long and it clamped onto my face. Now you gotta keep in mind, about an eight to nine foot alligator is gonna have well over two, 3,000 pounds of pressure per square inch in its jaws. So a nice good chomp is, is gonna do some damage. So it's slashed up through the cheek, kind of starting down here by the, you know, uh, almost the gum line really. Uh, back over here, through the cheek, through the nose, broke my nose in a couple places. Tooth pain, especially those exposed nerves. It was like this constant, non-stop, incessant pain, as if somebody had like a small little pin knife and just stuck it in there and would just kind of be twisting it. You know, it started getting to a point to where it was affecting overall health. It wasn't just a, you know, appearance thing and then, you know, being a little self-conscious. I heard the ad come on uh, the radio and I was like, huh, okay, well there's a option for a solution. Plus doing it in one day, I mean, you're, you're not really out for the count for too long work-wise and everything else. Anytime somebody tells you to count backwards from 10 and the next thing you know you're waking up all like, what's going on? You know, and something new has happened, you know, it's a little, I guess nervous is probably the right word, but excited at the same time. Drinks on me later. <laughs> okay.
doing the new teeth now experience. From when I got to the office at 7, 7.30 in the morning uh, to get prepped for surgery, that was like one of the best days off I've had in a long time. It was such an easy experience and it flowed so well. Looks pretty good. Looks like new teeth now. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much, sir. Excellent work. New teeth now. <laughs> I married that man. That's right. I was excited to see how much energy I would actually have. Like once my body wasn't trying to compensate for you know, this crazy weird pain thing that was constantly going on. Right away that day, I think when I was coming out of the anesthesia and I was starting to really get my wits about me again, I mean, I could almost notice it right away. Like, huh, it was like taking a deep breath of fresh air. Like, whew, okay, I don't want to say I feel younger, but I feel younger again. You know, it's like the fountain of youth. <laughs>
the mental nerve. This is the, remember when I talked about the fifth cranial nerve, the one that controls the feeling of your face, and it has three divisions, the first division, the second division, and the third division. So the third division of that nerve travels in the jaw. This is the one where you go to the dentist and you get a shot way back in your mouth and you get numb all the way out on your lip. I mean, we've all had that. So that nerve comes out of a little hole that's right about here. And so those implants are tilted because if you, so if that implant went straight down, it would go right into the mental nerve and it would numb that person permanently. But, if, but by tilting the implant forward, the body of the implant is thrown in front of the nerve, yet the working head of the implant is still more posterior to break up the cantilever. So there's not a posterior cantilever. So you get a good anterior posterior spread. And it's the same in the upper jaw, which we call the maxilla, and the lower jaw we call the mandible. So the sinus will have a different configuration in each individual and we look at that on the scan and we look at that and we call that the sinus slope. So if there is a favorable sinus slope, then we're able to tilt implants like you see and avoid the sinus, avoid any kind of sinus bone grafting and keep that implant in good solid bone. And these are all traditional implants, a traditional technique. And then what's the case of a bone loss? Right. So then we see this is a, the most common type of zygomatic procedure that we do where there are four traditional implants in the front of the jaw because the person has enough bone there. In the posterior, there's no bone because of the configuration of the sinus or the slope of the sinus, as I mentioned earlier. So in that case, we do a zygomatic implant on each side in the posterior of the upper jaw in order to get an implant further in the back to break up any cantilever when the hybrid bridge is fabricated. Now, zygomatic implants are only placed in the upper jaw because the zygoma bone is the cheekbone. The zygoma bone, the cheekbone, sort of blends into the upper jaw bone, not the lower jaw bone. So we don't do zygomatic implants for the lower jaw, only the upper. Perfect. They work very well. We've... And then in the case <clears throat> of, you know, really no bone. <laughs> right. Yeah, so when a person has no bone in the front of the jaw, and no bone in the rear of the jaw, then we do what we call a quad zygomatic technique, where it, really the smaller picture to the upper right is the quad zygomatic implant, this one. And so there's two anterior zygomatic implants and two posterior zygomatic implants. Now, occasionally, if we could have the previous picture back up there. Occasionally, you, we will see a person that has some bone just to the left and to the right of the midline, the very front of the upper jaw. So we move the anterior zygomatic implant a little bit more to the posterior and open up a space up there in the front to place two additional traditional implants. So the person ends up with six total, four zygomatic, plus two traditional. And this is serious support. This is more support than six traditional implants. Yes. And the lower has been treated with a, in this picture, the lower has been treated with a, with a typical tilted four with a couple of supp supplemental short implants in the back. Once again, most people get the four in the lower anterior because most people do not have enough bone depth in the posterior to put any implants back there because there's a nerve it runs through the jaw back there. So these are the zygomatic techniques when there's lack of bone in the upper jaw. This is Dr. Richard's team. So 
these ladies, you know, work with you every day <clears> and <throat> they do excellent work and they, you know, exclusively deal with you know, implants. So right. um, you'll be in great hands with any of them. Yeah, all these gals, they do all the maintenance. They take the teeth yeah. out, clean them, put them back in, check everything. I come along behind them and check. But they um, they remove more teeth and put more teeth back in than probably all the dentists in, <laughs> in Lakeland, Florida combined in a year, <laughs> maybe two. Uh, and they're all very, very well trained because they were trained by me. <laughs> and um, all, in addition, they're just all really nice people. Everybody that Definitely. works for us here at New Teeth Now, they're all nice people. They are great, I agree. <laughs> We're just so lucky and fortunate. And this is our restorative team. So we have Dr. Nafala, Dr. Divs, and Dr. Sorrento. Um, these are the dentists that you'll be working with in designing um, your teeth from the shape, the size, the color. They'll work with you on how they fit and feel, all of that. So that's who you'll be working with um, as well. And we're going to hear from Dr. Dibbs and the dental lab. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That You can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about, can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall, and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note, they can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists, and they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced, and I don't know of any other office that's like this. So as you can see, that's why we love it having under, you know, in, all in-house so we can clearly communicate with everybody. Um, and this is our in-house dental lab team. That's who creates all <laughs> of, you know, the beautiful smiles that our patients receive. Um, we have a few questions come in, so we'll go ahead and, and answer those now. Um, so this person says they only have 10% of their gums left. Maybe they mean like bone, um, but they're just wondering what their options would be. Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure what 10% of your gums or bone left means. And without a scan, it's really hard to answer this question. Um, I mean, it could be you might need quadzygomatic implants. It's, it's just hard to say. Really, you need to have a scan and have it evaluated by someone that knows, knows what they're doing or who does this. Yeah, so if you're so, interested, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a scan and uh, see what you need. Pre-existing medical conditions uh, certainly uh, can be an issue, particularly people who are on these IV bone density drugs like Reclast, 
Uh, some people uh, who have had certain types of cancer are on ex jiva or other even more potent intravenous uh, drugs, so that can be a problem. Um, typically, the, the ladies that are taking Fosamax and Actinel and Boniva, those are not a deal killer. But if you take someone who's, let's say, taking Fosamax, that wouldn't be a deal killer. But, you know, they've got arthritis and they're on prednisone. Well, that's like, you know, another yellow light. And then you add smoking to that. Now you got three things. Yeah. And so when you start stacking things like smoking, uh, various medications and things of that nature, when you start stacking things on top of one another, then that that may be a deal killer in some cases for sure. And then in other uh, situations, we cannot get a medical clearance to do the procedure under general anesthesia or even IV sedation. And these are not the types of procedures that you do under local anesthesia. So um, some certain heart conditions could uh, disqualify a person based upon inability to administer anesthesia. We've had a few physicians, cardiologists say, yeah, they can have it done, but they need to be in an inpatient hospital setting. And we're on the staff here at Lakeland Regional Health and go to the hospital to do procedures often, uh, but that can get into some uh, major you know, hospital costs. Um, so, you know, sometimes those types of things are, you know, can be a deal killer yeah. in, uh, in getting something like this done. Um, how swollen is your face after surgery? Well, you know, that's hard. That's a hard one to answer because some folks swell more than others. Typically with traditional implant surgery, for the placement of traditional implants, well, I wouldn't say it's too badly swollen. Uh, swelling goes up for a couple of days and then comes down. Uh, folks that have uh, quadzygomatic procedures have more tissue reflected and therefore more swelling and sometimes more bruising. So those, uh, they, they could be quite swollen and uh, take a week or 10 days before they want to go outside. So, it, you know, it depends on the individual. It also depends on what procedure you have. So the uh, top set of teeth that you see here, they're on the top resting on the bottom set. The top set is made out of zirconia, and the bottom set that you see is made out of acrylic. And they're the, both these sets of teeth have been worn for five years. Um, and you can like immediately tell the difference. With the top set of teeth, they look brand new. The bottom set, they're kind of absorbing stains. They're looking pretty dull. They're just not looking you know, healthy. Um, and so that's what happens when you choose like an acrylic set of teeth for your final set versus a zirconia, and that's why we place zirconia. Right. So implant coordinators, we have Shauna, Allie, and Mara. If you come in for a consultation, that's who you'll be seeing. Um, they are, you know, amazing ladies. Shauna and Allie both have worked as assistants, and Mara was a dental hygienist. So they have like extreme, right. extreme backgrounds in dental. Um, and they'll walk you through the whole procedure. They'll answer all your questions, even before Dr. Richards gets in there. So um, they are excellent. Yeah, Allie was one of my surgical assistants for five years. Yes. So she knows almost everything. Um, at your consultation, it, you'll first take a CT scan so or an ICAT scan. So that's when <laughs> we'll be able to see how much bone you have and then we will develop a treatment plan with exact fees. So you'll walk out of here knowing exactly what you need, um, exactly how much it will cost, all of that. Um, and I guess it's good to kind of explain why we do a CT versus an X-ray, like having that 3D model to look at. Yeah, you know, I, I tell people that a CT is like having a camera where you can, you can take a picture of a person from the front, from the side, from the top, and then the software more or less um, puts all that together and then allows you to look at cross-sectional slices and things like that. So, you, so we can see thickness, we can see the sinus, we can see the nerve canals and get a better idea of the bone available to put the implants into. Yes. 
and this is the overall process. Um, so first, you know, say you watch this webinar and you're like, I am ready for a consultation. I'm going to get in. I'm going to give us a call. So you'll come in for the consultation and then you want to move forward with treatment. Then we'll schedule a pre-op and impressions appointment. Um, that's where <coughs> you'll be meeting with a restorative doctor to, you know, pick out what you want your temporary teeth to look like. And then there is surgery day, which we covered in the beginning. Um, and then after surgery, you'll have those series of post-ops, so a few with Dr. Richards, and then he'll release you to the restorative doctor to start creating your final teeth. Um, get those, you know, be happy. Ugh, I can't talk tonight. Create your final teeth, make sure you're happy with those, and then we'll place the finals. Um, and then after that, all there is is general maintenance. And what does maintenance look like after they get, after they get their final teeth? Well, regular maintenance at home looks like a water pick and a tooth, toothbrush and a toothpaste. But yearly maintenance includes removal of your teeth. So that would be removal of the six little screws that hold the upper teeth in or the five little screws that hold the lower teeth in. We remove them, clean them with an ultrasonic cleaner, clean the abutment parts that are still in your mouth, check those and make sure they're tight, put everything back together and check your bite. So that would be a yearly maintenance yes. visit. And we cannot overemphasize how important it is. When we see problems, it's from someone who typically they call us in the afternoon and they said their teeth are loose or they've come out and we look at their records and they haven't been in in five, eight, 10, 12, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that have problems. People that come in, have their maintenance visits, keep everything tight, we just don't see problems. Right. So you go buy a new car and run it until, it, until the engine seizes, I mean, that's, that's kind of like... Yeah, if you never changed your oil. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like what that would, that would be, and we see that occasionally. Yeah, so, so as long as you're brushing, flossing, and right. getting them cleaned a couple times a year, <clears throat> you'll be good. Um, and then we, lastly, we're going to hear from Shirley. So she is from the UK. She had years of pain and couldn't eat certain foods and was extremely self-conscious about her teeth and her smile. So we're going to hear how this procedure has, um, you know, helped her life as well. You can't eat apples, you can't eat steak. There's all sorts of things you can't eat. I also couldn't eat sweet things, but I was always at the dentist having something put back or I was just in severe pain. I saw an out. Here, here was something that I could do which was going to take away all the years of hurt, pain and people looking at you like you don't take care of yourself maybe. I know that's in your mind, but it's a big part of how you feel when your teeth don't look good. For new teeth now to give me a, a solution, it's just been life-changing. I didn't want anyone else to do the procedure but Dr. Richards because I really, really trusted him. So we put her to sleep, removed all of her teeth, trimmed up the bone and infected tissue, installed six implants in the upper jaw, six implants in the lower jaw, and that afternoon we put the teeth in, and she and her husband uh, went home. I really liked how Dr. Richards spoke. I liked how he behaved with people. My husband and myself got on with him really well straight away. It was the connection I needed. I, I needed to have spoken to somebody one-to-one, -one, personally. Dr. Richards solved the problem. I wish I'd known about new teeth now several years prior. The fact that you can go there and come away with teeth in one day, to me, is just mind-blowing. Now I, I can just eat what I like. You know that really hard toffee that you can get with the chocolate on the I just love that. <laughs> and so many people compliment me and say how beautiful my teeth are, that it just made a huge difference to my life. I think I'll be a lot more confident again. So Shirley now can eat anything she wants. She has so much confidence 
And like so many of our patients, she just wishes she'd done it earlier. I really don't know how many times I've heard a patient say, I just wish I had done this like years yeah, ago. Yeah, I've heard that quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. So if you're on the fence, just go ahead. Um, we had a couple more questions come in. So this person asked, why don't you open in New, New York or New Jersey or Connecticut? There's nothing like your facility in this area, in that tri-state area. Yeah. It, you know, it's pretty hard to... Uh duplicate what we have uh, in another city. Uh, we're actually partnered up with a business called Frontline Dental Implant Specialties and we are doing some expanding, but uh, I don't think there's anything planned in that area right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can always just become an out-of-state patient and it's yeah. really smooth and works that way. So. That's somebody, what we can do for now. Somebody asked the difference between an orthodontist and an oral surgeon. That was from from, from before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and it, we did we did. Let me see. We looked up the dental spa of Broad Street um, just to see for the um, person who was asking about the, they had the all on four but still are yeah. dentures. Yeah. And he's a general dentist, so that's why he's doing that procedure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, not an orthodontist, um, but a general dentist. And then the last question is how long from start to finish the entire process, like time-wise? Uh, consult. Uh, consult to surgery could be as quick as one week, <clears throat> depending on your medical situation. If you're healthy, totally healthy, and you can get your primary to do a a medical clearance letter and all of your lab work is good and your cardiogram is fine you could have a procedure right away within a week or so then uh, five months post-surgery healing five months post-surgery healing and then moving into the final teeth that could be as I said earlier with an out-of-state person who comes to Lakeland on Sunday and then they come in on Monday and their treatment is completed by Thursday. So I would say the absolute shortest would be probably five and a half months total consult to final teeth. Total. Perfect. If it's a lower only, a lower only, we would have that lower only heal three months. And so then the lower only would be a couple of months shorter because of the reduced healing time. Yes. But pretty much everybody gets zirconia. There's some issues with a person who has a full upper regular denture acrylic putting zirconia down on the bottom and it, you know the lower jaw every time you bite it, it's kind of like a hammer yeah. hammered on that and so we typically let the restorative dentist deal with the person about the different materials and whether or not it would be prudent to use lower zirconia against a regular acrylic upper denture yeah so for denture wearers that would be yeah so potential. four and a half to five and a half months that'd be the that'd be the quickest depending on if it's lower only or upper only or full mouth. Yes. Um, and then, let's see. So, <clears throat> Bruce, he is from Orlando, Florida. He experienced a lot of pain and could not eat the foods he loved. And that was, you know, his biggest pain point was just not being able to enjoy foods. And now he can eat anything. So that's a huge change for Bruce. Um, and then we, before I go into pricing, we will wrap up with the key differentiators um, so these are things that set us apart from other facilities so we have our board certified oral surgeons zygomatic implants and the ability uh, to use general anesthesia so you don't want to touch on any of the, I know we've talked about them a lot but do you want to touch on anything else yeah no I think you know board certification you have to finish a accredited uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery program, those are a minimum of four years after dental school as opposed to a dentist taking a weekend course. Um, 
so then after you've been in practice a couple of years, then you can submit cases and sit for an oral exam and written exam to be board certified. Uh, the zygomatic implants we talked about, uh, zyga we've been doing zygomatic implants in our practice since 2007. And then general anesthesia, because Dr. Kirkpatrick and I both hold general anesthesia permits, we are able to have a nurse anesthetist work under us and provide general anesthesia for our patients. So that's how all that works. And you can only have a permit if you're an oral surgeon. So um, those are things that if you're you know, looking into other facilities, those are things to keep in mind and really ask those questions to your, the other providers. Um, I did get one final question in. Are, uh, is there any allergies to the materials? You know, occasionally we have heard of a person having an allergy to acrylic. They'll come in <clears throat> and they're, they're having a lot of redness and they have been diagnosed that the upper denture that they are wearing is causing an allergy and their mucosa, their mouth skin, the mucosa is, is red and itchy and swollen. So occasionally we run into that, not with titanium, Titanium's in knees and hips and shoulders and dental implants, and we, I've never, um, never seen anyone. I thought I might have heard of a person Dr. Kirkpatrick was dealing with <clears throat> that um, had been up to the National Institutes of Health, and they thought they were allergic to titanium, but then it turned out they weren't. Okay. So I don't know yeah. of anybody that's allergic to titanium. So allergies have the potential, but extremely unusual. Thank you all for tuning in tonight, and thanks for submitting such great questions. Um, but we hope everyone's having a great start to the year, and um, have a good evening.